Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 3 of Observability Zero to Hero series. Till now, we have completed two episodes in this series. Starting with day one, where we have learnt about the introduction to observability. Basically, the fundamentals of observability, such as what is observability, what are the three pillars of observability. We also learnt the difference between monitoring and observability, how they are different from each other and some important basic information that is required for you to get started with observability. Then in day two, which is the last class, we learned about metrics and monitoring. So we went in detail about metrics and monitoring. We took a real world example to understand metrics and monitoring. Along with that, we also understood the differences between metrics and monitoring. Then we learned about a popular monitoring system in the space of Kubernetes that is Prometheus. We learned the basic architecture of Prometheus. We learned how to install and configure Prometheus on an EKS cluster. And we also saw how to install and configure the Prometheus stack, which is Alert Manager as well as Grafana. Towards the end of the video, we learned how to access them from your browser. Today in day three, what we will do is we will learn more about the Prometheus architecture, but practically, so we will see how Prometheus is scraping the metrics practically. So we will see how it collects information from node exporter, how it collects information from cube state metrics and other sources. We will also learn about PromQL, which is Prometheus query language. What is it? How can you write basic queries in Prometheus? So this video is going to be very interesting because we are going to play with Prometheus. We are going to play with Grafana and we are going to see a lot of metrics live in this video. Make sure you watch it till the end. And as I keep saying, after watching the video, please go through the notes. We have put a lot of efforts in preparing the notes to make sure after watching this video, this notes should serve as a revision material for you people. And everything that I talk in the video will definitely be covered in the notes. Sometimes you might also find much more in the notes. So spend 10 to 15 minutes and revise the video. Okay, now let's go to the whiteboard and start from Prometheus architecture before we log into the system and see those metrics. What we learned was Prometheus is a monitoring tool and the primary responsibility of Prometheus is to scrape the metrics. And there are some important sources from which it scrapes the metrics such as the node exporter which is collecting information. What does a node exporter do? It will run on your Kubernetes cluster as a pod and it will collect information from all of your Kubernetes nodes such as the CPU information of your nodes, the memory information of your nodes from the system files of your nodes or by running some programs. So node exporter is typically getting information of your Kubernetes nodes, which are the infrastructure part on your cloud. If you are running Kubernetes cluster on a AWS environment, these are typically the virtual machines or the EC2 instances. So this is what node exporter is doing. It is getting all the information from the nodes. Then another primary source where Prometheus gets the information or Prometheus scrapes the information, pulls the information is from cube state metrics. So cube states metrics is very, very important. Again, 
this is a type of exporter or a program or a plugin that is running on your Kubernetes cluster as a pod and it talks to the API server of your Kubernetes cluster. And it literally gets a lot of information from your Kubernetes cluster, such as your pod status, deployment status, replica set, services, config maps, custom resources, such as validating webhook. Literally, it gets so much information from your Kubernetes cluster on a periodic basis. So it gets the metrics and keeps those metrics with itself. Okay. And then the custom metrics. Another primary source from where Prometheus scrapes the metrics is the custom metrics which are related to your application, such as the time your application is taking to process a HTTP request or number of users that have created an account with your application over the period of 24 hours or 15 minutes or one one week you can get such information from custom metrics we will see how developers will write these custom metrics in day four that is tomorrow we call this as instrumentation of metrics we will see how can you do that using open telemetry other sources but this is more from developer point of view but still we will learn how developers will write these custom metrics and how Prometheus collects it. So these are primary sources from where Prometheus scrapes the metrics. We will see practically, as I told you at the beginning of the video, how node exporter is collecting this information, how cube state metrics is collecting this information. Wait for a while. It is important to make sure your fundamentals are clear. So Prometheus scrapes these metrics and stores them in a time series database. If Prometheus or on your Kubernetes cluster, if node exporter is not installed or if cube state metrics is not installed, literally the amount of metrics that Prometheus can scrape goes down. Without these things, Prometheus cannot gather a lot of information because these are pillars or sources of Prometheus. And overall, in your organization, you might have other exporters as well. Like there can be a database exporter. If you are using, let's say, MySQL dominantly, and you want to collect metrics about your MySQL database, the performance of your MySQL, then you can install something called as MySQL exporter on your Kubernetes cluster. And that will collect information from your MySQL. So as a DevOps engineer, as an SRE engineer, you have so many things that are already done for you. Like you just need to know how to run MySQL exporter as a pod, as a service on your Kubernetes cluster. It is taking care of a lot of things. If you just tell it the IP address of your MySQL, it will continuously talk to the MySQL and get the information. Similarly, if you know how to install node exporter, most of your job is done. Because node exporter is getting the information. And what Prometheus is doing, it is storing all of that in a time series database. Typically, time series database is nothing but at this particular timestamp, what are the values of your metrics? So time series database is, it is storing on a periodic basic where it knows the time. That's it. Because in this case, time is very important, right? In a traditional database, you will just put the key value pairs that is name value or employee name. What is the name of the employee? But in Prometheus, the time is also very important at 10 o'clock. What are the metrics? So in the time series database, you store the metrics maybe as key value pairs, but along with that, you also record the time of that particular metrics. That's why it is called as time series database. Now, if Prometheus does all of these things and just keeps all of that information with Prometheus, how as an end user or how as a DevOps engineer or site reliability engineer, how you can know what information Prometheus has. So that's why 
there is something called as PromQL, which is Prometheus query language, using which you can talk to a component of Prometheus, which is the HTTP server. So Prometheus has a HTTP server, using which as a user, you can write the PromQL queries. For a database, you might be writing a SQL query. Similarly, for Prometheus, to get the information from time series database, you are writing the PromQL query. Prometheus query language. And as you write the PromQL language, you can get the required output, maybe in the graph format or in the raw format, whatever you would like to prefer. Because this information is very raw. Maybe sometimes you might not be even able to read it because you have tons of information. Using PromQL, you can aggregate it. You can get it for a set defined timeline and you can look it in the graph format. And additionally, we learned that there is also something called as alert manager, where if you feel a particular metrics is exceeding your uh, threshold. If you feel that the CPU of the nodes is too abnormal, you can set an alert and you can fire that alert to a particular Slack channel or email address, email alias. So this is the primary architecture of Prometheus. Now let's see in practice that, okay, we discussed all of these things, but let's see if node exporter is actually collecting the information. Abhishek, you said node exporter collects the information. Can we see that? For sure. First, let's take our Kubernetes cluster. This is where we stopped the last video, right? Where we have used the kubectl port forward and we have exposed Prometheus, Grafana service, as well as alert manager service. Now, why did we use kubectl port forward? Because different people might be using different Kubernetes clusters uh, and their ingress configuration can also be different. So kubectl port forward works unanimously in any Kubernetes cluster. That's why I expose these services using port forward and showed you how to access the user interface. And I also promised that I will share the ingress configuration. So if you are on AWS, so here you have the ingress resource, just deploy this ingress resource and using this file, install the ALB controller and you don't have to do this kubectl port forwarding. You can directly access them using the uh, load balancer IP address as well as the endpoint. But I will not go into that in this video because it will confuse people. I have the steps for you. Just download that steps or just execute that steps on your EKS cluster and you will get it done. But because different people might have different Kubernetes cluster, Let's continue with the kubectl port forward and expose all of the services. Abhishek, I did not follow day two. What are you talking about? Just go to the day two folder or watch the video. In the readme file, you have the commands to expose Prometheus, Grafana, as well as alert manager and use it on your browser. Okay. Now, again, if we go to the terminal, and if you run kubectl get pods in the monitoring namespace, I'm not sure if you have observed it, but when you are installing the Prometheus stack, kube Prometheus stack, along with alert manager, along with Grafana, and along with Prometheus, what the kube state met, sorry, the kube Prometheus stack installs for you is also the node exporter as well as the cube state metrics. As I told you, it is very, very important to have the node exporter and cube state metrics on your Kubernetes cluster. Without this, Prometheus cannot get a lot of information. It primarily relies on node exporter as well as cube state metrics to scrape the metrics. And you can see there are two instances of the node exporter. But 
only one instance or only one pod of cube state matrix. Do you know why? Because node exporter runs as a daemon set. It has to collect information from each and every node individually. So node exporter runs as a daemon set and cube state matrix, it has to talk to the API server. It doesn't matter on which node it is. It can make an API call to the API server. So there is only one replica of it. Okay, perfect. Now, if we do kubectl get svc, I want to get the IP address of the node exporter service so that I can make a request and show you how it is collecting the information. So this is the node exporter here and the service is running as a cluster IP address, which is a very good practice. So this is the IP address and port is 9100. It is running as cluster IP. So obviously you cannot access it on your browser or outside your Kubernetes cluster. So what we will do is we will take our AWS account because this Kubernetes cluster is running on AWS. I will go to the EC2 instances. So these are the nodes of my Kubernetes cluster. I will go to one of the nodes and click on the connect button, click on the session manager. Abhishek, I am doing this on a mini cube cluster. What should I do? Just run mini cube SSH and you will be inside the node of your mini cube cluster. It is very simple. If you have EKS cluster, then you need to go to the EC2 instance or log into your node. Run curl followed by the IP address of your node exporter followed by the port of your node exporter, which is 9100. Let's do that. 9100 colon 9100 slash metrics. And see, this is the information that your node exporter is collecting periodically. So you can see the amount of information that the node exporter is collecting. It gets the CPU, it gets the memory, it gets the programs that are running on your node. Let's say how many threads of an application are running on your node, how many Go routines, if you're using Go programming language, all of them are collected using the node exporter. And it is keeping all this information. Where is it keeping? On the slash matrix endpoint. As I told you, Prometheus gets the information from node exporter. But how does it get? In node exporter, there will be an endpoint called slash matrix. And on slash matrix, node exporter will return this particular output. So I use the curl command. Curl followed by the IP address and port of node exporter followed by slash matrix. And it gave me all this information. And this information, if you see, it is in the format that Prometheus understands. So this is the purpose of an exporter. Similarly, if you like, let's use the cube state matrix exporter. Right. Again, you will have cube state matrix on your Kubernetes cluster, just like how you have the node exporter. This is the IP address of your cube state matrix. Port is 8080. So again, if we go to the session manager, curl port 8080 slash metrics. See, this is the complete information of your Kubernetes cluster. The validating webhook configuration, literally the resource version of your validating webhook on a particular namespace, or you want to see the pod related information. How many times your container crashed? We can see that. For example, let's grep on the containers. Grep container. So on the cube state matrix, which is collecting the metrics from API server, I will use a grep command to get the container information. And again, there are a lot of things. So let's also do grep on, let's say restart. So you can see 
how many times the init container is restarting which init container all the init containers it gets information of total init containers on your kubernetes cluster how many times they are restarting which one is restarting at what time is it restarting it collects all that information just like init container sidecar container again your regular container see this is the regular container cube pod container status restart total so this is the metric and in this metric you can use a particular label so this is the label where you can see in which namespace you want or what is the name of the pod you can do all that let's take this as an example and let's play with it okay so prometheus now has gathered a lot of information right as we saw from node exporter it gathered a lot of information from cube state metrics it gathered a lot of information can it actually return this values on our query like is this information saving in the time series database let's see in real time for that we just need the ip address of prometheus so using port forward we exposed it on this particular ip address so let's go to the browser and paste it perfect my prometheus is running now i will take that metric that we saw okay cube cube pod container status restarts total and what is this metric doing it is basically telling how many times the containers are restarting all the containers in all the namespaces let's run this query okay so these are different containers and it explains how many times the containers are restarting abhishek it's hard to read this what to do the graph option so here you have graph where you can select a particular container right now none of the containers are restarted that's why you are not seeing anything let's fine tune the query and what i'm going to do this is your first query right so i'm going to improvise the query to improvise the query along with the metric that you have copied in the label section that is in the square uh, curly brackets just say namespace is equals to let's use the default namespace and click on execute it has written nothing because if you do kubectl get pods let's do kubectl get pods on the default namespace and literally there is nothing that's why the prometheus is saying okay this is the graph there is nothing so there is no graph abhishek let's install a pod that gets crashed okay so i want to see practically if prometheus is working or not and if cube state metrics is collecting the information and giving it to prometheus or not so let's do one thing we will install a pod that will always crash so i have an example command or let's write this command so this is a kubectl command kubectl run busybox crash so basically a pod that will always crash it will go into crash loop back off because in the command argument i said exit one that means it will keep crashing and i want to see that on the prometheus so that's why i gave this pod that will always crash so let's put it and if you do kubectl get pods it crashed once let's do again okay it crashed only once till now in the last 10 seconds in the 12 seconds it only crashed once because it is going into the crash loop back off now you can see the restarts are two that means it crashed twice in the last one minute let's see if you can see that on prometheus execute the query okay now you can see that there is a graph and if you see towards the end there is something here why because the graph is shown for one hour let's just change it to one minute and you can see 
there is a graph which explains okay there is one crash here there is another crash here and another crash here so if someone does not have access to your kubernetes cluster you can create a dashboard for them using this query and you can tell them okay do you want the crashes of the pods run this query do you want on default namespace this is the label like this is the query for default namespace do you want for all namespaces just remove this and you can literally get for all namespaces so this is for the busy box pod and just change the pod here this is for alert manager pod this is for the eks node agent pod this is for core dns pod so they can see the graphs for each pods if you have empty in the brackets but you can add labels and selector where you can say namespace is equals to default and you can see about a particular pod sometimes your development team will ask okay abhishek can you uh, set up prometheus and set up a particular query so that every day we can see how many times our pod is crashing in one minute time or if you just change it to 24 hours something like this right so you can also see in one day how many times the pod is crashed it is not available for one day that's why the result query is empty but sometimes as you have a established kubernetes cluster or you have a proper dev team which is running kubernetes cluster every day then they might also want to see it for 24 hours perfect so this is how you see the particular query and on the prometheus now let's try to understand what this query did like just for a couple of minutes so as soon as you created a pod okay who receives the information cube api server and then it will talk to the scheduler then it will talk to the uh, kubelet kubelet installs the pod let's not go there that is not required so as you have used the kubectl run command to create a pod instruction went to the kube api server and there is someone who is continuously looking at the kube api server who is it kube state metrics so kube state metrics was continuously looking at the api server and it got the information that okay some pod is installed now i will get the metrics about the pod one of the metrics that i am interested is total restarts okay and i will collect this information and i will keep it on the slash metrics endpoint in the format that prometheus understands right so that when prometheus how did prometheus come to know that is what i am trying to explain so now prometheus is continuously watching cube state metrics on the slash metrics endpoint it is getting the information from api server and now when as a user when you are firing the promql query you got the information so so many things happened within seconds of time and as a end user it might be your manager who might be looking at this graphs or it can be your testing team they can get the information about the pod crashes there are thousands of metrics this is one example that i have taken if you go back and if you look at the session manager the reason why i was showing you the session manager is the cube state metrics itself can collect so much information we just looked at one particular metrics let's see another one for example we looked at the pod container restarts right let's look at the init container restarts so again you just go here and just remove this command put init containers without a namespace so copy the metrics and execute the command here okay there are no init containers on the cluster that's why you are not seeing anything you can do for the nodes oh sorry the command is wrong 
okay so these are the different init containers on the cluster and you can see the number of restarts for them abhishek but how will i know the total number of metrics like which are important to me which are important for my organization you need to do the research there is absolutely no other option there are some standard things like pod crashes which is a standard thing or when i show you the grafana you will understand much more because grafana has better visualization than prometheus that's why grafana is very popular we will get to grafana right now let's focus here so what you can do is you can also make use of the prometheus auto completion where if you type cube it will tell you different information that it can give you like cube config map that is created execute okay it shows how many number of config maps are created you can also do it for a particular namespace so you are manager asked abhishek tell me how many config maps are created in the cube system namespace in last 10 minutes or in the last 2 days okay so let's give the cube system namespace and click on the execute so you can see the number of config maps that are available in the cube system namespace and you can also see for period of let's say 30 minutes for the period of 5 days you can see different lines here which are representing different config maps that is cube config map created per this is for a particular config map which is aws authentication this is another config map you can get the information about on which node the config map is created you can see multiple things like if the config map is deleted and recreated all that things so just explore this uh, auto completion feature in prometheus and i would also recommend just go to your session manager or your node and see what are the different things that your cube state metrics as well as the node exporter is collecting do do you need to know everything definitely not required it is not your business to know all the metrics that cube state metrics is collecting as you have requirement in your organization you will use certain metrics for your interviews you can say the common metrics like how many times the pod has crashed how many times the config maps are created over a certain time how many secrets are there in your kubernetes cluster or it can be like the cpu memory disk utilization the http request users created these kind of things you can keep in mind and you can tell in the interviews now abhishek if prometheus is doing all these things for me what is the purpose of grafana prometheus has basic user interface and it can show you very basic graphs it is a monitoring tool it can do three things the metrics collection it can do the visualization and it can also help you with the alerts you can see here you can also set up alerts with prometheus we will cover this right now we are focusing more on metrics so it can do the alerting it can do the graphing and it is also scraping the metrics so it is eligible to be called as a monitoring system it is doing three things now the point is what is reason for grafana grafana like let me move to the whiteboard so you can understand grafana as the better visualization or a better dashboard platform and the good thing about grafana is that tomorrow if your organization is moving away from prometheus to let's say nagios or to let's say grafana graph sorry graphite grafana supports all of those data sources to your management you can say so this is your grafana instance like you can give it to your manager your your director say that this is the grafana these are your dashboards i have configured the queries so just go to the dashboard if you want to see total pod restarts total secrets created go to grafana click on this button you get the information so it is independent of prometheus second thing is 
in couple of minutes you will see that it has better visualization because it is predominantly created as a dashboard application or a visualization application grafana is not a monitoring tool it is a visualization platform or a dashboard platform second thing is in grafana you can also set up your authentication and authorization you can see prometheus here there is no authentication authorization mechanism with grafana what you can do is you can integrate it with your maybe the iam or you can integrate it with your sso so that you can say only my managers should see these particular dashboards or management so my management can have the view access on the dashboards my devops team can create particular dashboards like they can delete a dashboard they can create a dashboard or they can update the query of the dashboard my dev team has certain permissions my qa team has certain permissions so along with better better visualization platform also support for other data sources or monitoring tools like prometheus it also supports the authentication and authorization abhishek can we see that for sure again go to the terminal see what is the command to access grafana okay this is the ip address and port to access grafana we have already accessed it before that's why i got this page otherwise the username is admin and the password is prom hyphen operator you can get this information from the docs or watch the previous video so this is a grafana ui where like i told you you have logged in as admin but if you go to the administrator tab you can integrate you can create users you can do the authentication with your sso and then you can define who is admin who is dev who is etc so in grafana you already have dashboards so in prometheus you were writing some queries right and you are executing the queries to get the graphs but what grafana has done is it has created some predefined graphs so these graphs comes with some queries which are out of the box on grafana dashboard so as a devops engineer as site reliability engineer what are the things that you use on your day to day basis are already set up on grafana for example you can see the node related information for example this is the pods that are on the default namespace abhishek why am i not seeing any data because the data source that you have selected is default click on the drop down and select prometheus and click on the default just you will start seeing so you can see the information here there is one pod called as busy box and it is occupying 0.00006 of the cpu on the node because it's just a dummy pod right so that's why it is occupying very less cpu so these dashboards are already created for you if you are using prometheus you should have written that query that is the cpu utilization of the pod in the default namespace let's go to another namespace for example cube system you can see multiple pods are running here and if you click on a particular pod you will get the graph of that particular pod as well like let's click on this particular pod and you got the memory utilization of the pod named aws node in the cube system namespace and you can also do the filter just like how we were doing on prometheus change it for let's say 30 seconds sorry that was auto refresh you can change the timeline of this particular graph for you are seeing it for last one hour 10:55 to 11:55 you can change it to see for 30 minutes you can change it to see for one day two days 10 days so grafana has automated some things for you these are the default dashboards on grafana 
such as your namespace pod resource utilization your let's say the persistent volumes that you have on your kubernetes cluster the commonly things commonly used things but i want to create additional dashboards abhishek the pod restarts is not available here what we tried on prometheus i don't see it here in grafana how to create the dashboard and give it to my management so what you can do is click on the new button and click on the dashboard so do you want to import a default dashboard no i want to create my own dashboard and what should be the data source grafana has already identified prometheus data source on your cluster so you don't have to do anything just select prometheus now here you can write the query so take the prometheus query what was that the so this was the query right if i copy it cube pod not for the init container for i want it for the containers so cube pod container status restart total and i wanted it in the namespace is equals to default run query okay i got this dashboard the pod got crashed eight times and if i just change it to 5 minutes i can see better in what time stamps the pod got crashed and let's say do it 30 minutes you can see very clearly so it got crashed at 1712 then it got crashed at 1713 14 17 so because it is crash loop back off the time is increasing if you remember the crash loop back off concept in kubernetes so what crash loop back off does is initially it crashes in the first one minute then it will do the loop with a back off that is then it will crash in 3 minutes then it will crash in 5 minutes then it will crash in 7 minutes like that that is crash loop back off so you can get this information if this is important for your organization you can save this dashboard and see you now the dashboard is saved as soon as your manager logs in they can see this dashboard every day maybe towards the end of the day they can look at this dashboard like that you can create some 10 dashboards 15 dashboards 20 dashboards and share it with your management you can also give the name for your dashboard and you can just save it abhishek apart from prometheus i want to add let's say more like i want to add nagios nagios or i want to add graphite influx db in the connection section go to the data sources these are the default data sources that you have <laughs> sorry these are the default data sources that you have click on add data source like you wanted to select influx db select it give the address of your influx db like provide the url uh, all the things that are required for the conf configuration prometheus was auto detected that's why you did not have to do much so this was the service address of the prometheus on your kubernetes cluster there was no authentication that why you accessed it out of the box and all the configuration was set to default and these are the dashboards related to prometheus only like that you can add multiple data sources in grafana so even if you are not using grafana for your prometheus you can use it with uh, influx db let's say nagios let's say uh, graphite and other things i think we have covered uh, the required things on the grafana dashboard this is how it is used now what are the things that are left for us to learn that is in tomorrow's class what are we going to learn one important concept that we have not covered till now is the custom metrics we used the node exporter we used cube state metrics what about this custom metrics abhishek you were telling http requests you were telling the number of logins how developer will write these custom metrics so in tomorrow's class we will focus about custom metrics what are the type of custom metrics or overall what are the type of metrics like in prometheus you have something called as the gauges you have 
counters you have summary and histogram now what are these things so when a developer is instrumenting the metrics or a devops engineer is instrumenting the metrics when they are writing the metrics they can define the metrics type as the following we will learn in tomorrow's class so how to instrument the custom metrics we will learn this then in your kubernetes there will be hundreds of pods there will be hundreds of services should prometheus be looking at the custom metrics for all the services and all the pods no you might have 10000 services on your kubernetes cluster if prometheus will make api calls to all the 10000 services on your kubernetes cluster literally your prometheus will eat up your kubernetes cluster because the number of calls have increased so the cpu memory utilization will go high for that there is a concept in prometheus called service monitor this service monitor will tell prometheus which services to look for which applications on your kubernetes cluster are exposing the slash metrics for example let's say you have deployed amazon on your kubernetes cluster or e-commerce on your kubernetes cluster and there is maybe slash login login endpoint there is logout endpoint there is let's say payments transactions different services out of which only login and payments are giving the metrics to you or only these are the services where your developer has instrumented the metrics it can be using open telemetry or any other thing so you will create a service monitor which will tell prometheus that okay only watch for login slash metrics payment slash metrics because only they will give you the metrics and store that metrics in the time series database right so we will cover what are custom metrics what are the type of metrics so that developers can instrument those metrics in their code we will learn about service monitor all this practically in tomorrow's class we will do a demonstration as well right so now your goal will be to go through the documentation go through prometheus look at some metrics from cube state metrics and node exporter and try to write the queries for them and one thing that i forgot to tell you is sorry if you go to the readme file you can also see that there are some commands for aggregation of metrics for example if you do something called average it can give you the average of the metrics that you have collected these are useful in case of cpu utilization or memory utilization for example you want to get average memory usage grouped by different namespaces on your kubernetes cluster for that you will use this called as average similarly you can use sum mostly you will use sum and average because as a devops engineer you might want to collect the sum of cpu utilization of pods in default namespace and abhishek namespace for that you will write the query and you will just say sum so go through the documentation you will understand uh, some of the aggregator functions which are very simple and you can get used to that also look at grafana right these are your take backs from this session and wait for the next session where we will learn about the custom metrics thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you found it useful see you all in the next video take care bye bye